Royce Unchained, presented by Josh Arnold, investment consultants, Mr. Money Talk. Well, that was a, <laughs> that was a basketball game last night, well, Pat. That was a basketball game, and uh, I don't think any of us uh, saw it coming in that uh, in that. Luca, Luca did. Luca, Luca, Luca was, did. Yeah, Luca did. Luca was fantastic, and then. Uh, then when he kind of said, then he kind of relaxed. And Kyrie decided to uh, dominate for uh, the time uh, Luca was sitting down. It was uh, thirty-six apiece for those two boys, and uh, man alive! Now uh, Ant ended up with twenty-eight, but it was a consolation twenty-eight. And Cat, I, I thought Cat actually fought it pretty good compared to everybody else for the rest of the night, but. Uh, I don't know. It just was. It was hard to watch. It was. It was unbelievable. The crowd didn't even yell. Rough you, refs, you suck. After about six minutes, right? They just gave up. They couldn't. Uh, yeah. They, they couldn't figure out. They couldn't figure out an excuse for what they were watching. No. Well, and that was I, what what Luca did in the first eight minutes of that game yes, was sorry. one of the most bleep you sports performances <laughs> I have seen in my life. He was yeah, trash talking right. Snoop Dogg at one point yeah, on the baseline. Right. <laughs> he, like literally anyone that he could make eye contact with and yes. yell "f you" at in the first yeah. quarter, as he's putting up twenty points in the first eight minutes. Man, I had uh, people from Dallas telling me that uh, you know that's him when he makes a shot. He just he like starts swearing in happiness. You know of uh, how how pleased he <laughs> how pleased he is, is with himself. It's uh, I don't know. It was uh, it was fantastic. The first, yeah, twenty points within. What was it? There were ten minutes, two but two and a half minutes left in the quarter, and he had twenty. Yeah, Something yeah. Like I, I I think I'm pretty sure he had twenty with uh, like three and a half left, or so. I mean, yeah. it was it was wild. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, and they was, weren't, and it was just like top of the key three point mm-hmm. heat checks. The last yeah. nine points. Yeah, he's uh, he's as good a shooter as I've ever seen. As far as I'm not talking all distance and stuff, just getting it off, and uh, you know he can shoot the, he can create himself the 16 footer, and then he of course can create the, and he made a he made one that would have uh, embarrassed Car- Caitlin Clark. He had one of about a 30 footer, didn't he? At least yeah. a 30 footer. He's time. also I saw this morning. He is the only player to this point in NBA history to be leading the entire playoffs in points, rebounds, and assists. And assist, yeah, he had 10 rebounds last night. All defensive. You know, I was uh, I, I I was saying on defense. His his biggest talent on defense is pointing to some of his guys, telling him to go guard that guy. You know, he's yeah, go away, hey, right? He's de- he's he's but Delman he's, Young and left. Yeah, <laughs> then he's down, then he's down in the lane, and he'll, he'll rebound though. He had ten defensive rebounds last night, and uh, man alive, what a bold and uh, successful move on huh? trading those two number one picks at the you know in the with twenty games to go in the season yeah. and. Uh, and all of a sudden, you played the best defense in the league with Luca. How can you play the best defense in the league with Luca, who doesn't play defense? It's uh, it's pretty phenomenal. And uh, I think they got a shot, don't you, against Boston? Yeah, I, it's yes, they absolutely do. Because Boston, you know, Boston on paper is this titan the last three years, yes. right? There, you know, they. I think in the regular season, I'm pretty sure their average scoring margin for the season was like a plus 10 per game or something yes. crazy. But they, there's just this weird sort of vacancy to that team sometimes where they, they don't play well at home in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. There's just, there's not the same fire from a, a Jason Tatum. If you're yeah. getting this version of the Mavericks that the Timberwolves just saw for five games, I think the Mavericks beat the Celtics. I think they win the title. I think it'll be a battle, but uh, you know, Jalen Brown was fantastic in the in the last series for them, and I, I don't know if he's that good, but he was fantastic in that series. But uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be it'll be something, man. But I I just I think last night it'll just stand. How you know it doesn't spoil it. But it certainly puts a damper on it to the, to go out like that. You know, if you lose again by four, you say, well, what a battle. But God almighty, 
it's it's 18 to 18 and then it's 40 to 19. yeah that's that's unbelievable yeah 40 to 19 you go from 18 18 to 40 to 19 and aunt god love you i love you but you can't dribble through that wall constantly you're just you know give the ball up for god's sakes you know i i was sitting next to chip and he pointed this out he said their offense is Luca shooting, you know, the best shooter in the league, making shots. And uh, the Timberwolves offense for seven minutes was feed Rudy Gobert like he's Kareem Abdul-Jabbar waiting for the baby hook or something. With those great like, hands. With those yeah, fantastic Rudy hands. Rudy they got, oh, they, he did get one foul. I, I wonder, and I don't know if they would have said this publicly, but because they got the early, he was, they were isolating Rudy on Doncic. And yeah. so he, I, so he picked up the one foul, and yeah. I'm wondering if part of the Wolves' strategy was let's see if we can get him to pick up two quick fouls in the first quarter and get him in foul trouble for the first time in the series. I don't know. I don't know. How about uh, how about what they got out of Jaden McDaniels too? They got a, you know, you can't have him. He got he was in foul trouble, and he it looked like he was just frustrated and started fouling people for the hell of it, like he does. He had one rebound. He can't have one rebound. That's impossible. Yeah. And he's now he's back, sitting down in the corner, never getting the ball. They all of a sudden they phase him out again, and Ant's dribbling through a, you know, a, a defensive line, and uh, you know you got to let that guy make some, try to make some plays. You got to change. You know that that I I end up just i just wrote this that they got a one of the their, their big projects last year the big project in the summer was getting figuring out how to get gobert and cat to play together right yeah figure out this year it's you've got to get this guy indoctrinated into the offense you can't you can't have half your games with him taking four shots and getting two rebounds you know he's you're paying the guy what 128 million 200 like 25 a year yeah 25 million a year and he's a you know he starts off the series he goes uh he goes six for nine on threes and nine out of 15 and and lights it up and we never see him again you know it's uh i i don't know they're uh i don't i don't think the uh coaching staff distinguished itself in this series do you I mean, yeah, I well, Jason Kidd was well. It's it's also nice to have two of the greatest offensive players yeah, we've oh, yeah. ever seen. Just you know, yeah. if even yeah. if the Wolves play great defense, yes, boom, Luca hits a shot. I would say of of all the things, and there's a million things we could point to on both sides as to like why the series played out the way that it did. But I'll give you I'll give you these two nuggets tied into one: the Timberwolves in the series missed almost forty percent of their shots at the rim. So yes. like bunnies, rim, and and they're not all just like point blank wide no, open layups, they but a lot of them were contests, semi contested. But anyway. but to miss to miss almost forty percent of your shots at the rim, and on the flip side for Dallas, Daniel Gafford and Derek Lively in the series went forty for forty eight from the field, and though and I'm pretty Is sure that Pat, right? that's I think that's I forty dunks. That. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, when you it's hard to miss them when you're ducking it, right? And yeah. it's uh how did how and I'm not smart enough, how did they get them open for all those lobs when you it's, got Rudy uh, Gobert on the court? But that's the thing. If you if you watch a lot it's of those Louis, lobs, it's it's Lu, it's Luca drip probing in driven, the paint. Yeah. Uh, and then he throws and he, he waits, 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 mm -hmm. and throws the perfect lob that he yeah. waits for Rudy to maybe lunge at him. <laughs> it's so, you, you have to stop it at the top night, of the key. That one last night you're saying, where are you throwing that ball? And boom, the guy yeah. goes up and dumps it. <laughs> His passing, I, I didn't realize until this series what mm -hmm. an elite passer. I mean, he sees well, things a second before they yeah. develop. You know, because you always feel his whole instinct is to shoot, right? To, to get it up there, but uh, he's, a, he's a great passer. I mean... I was talking to Sweeney, and they love him. I mean, they just love him. They love the whole competitive nuts, the foul mouth, the, the whole thing. He's just, uh, yeah. he's just a goofball and loves basketball. And, you know, he's going to play the final series 
And if he doesn't get hurt, he's going to Slovenia to uh, try to qualify for the Olympics. And Sweeney's a, a assistant coach with the Slovenian team. Okay. And they still they have to win a four team bracket to qualify for the Olympics. But he's like a basketball sicko, you know. He just, who are they? Who are they competing against in the they four got, team? Uh, they got uh, Giannis's team in there, but I don't know if Giannis is playing or not. Like Greece, Greece. Yeah, yeah, they got Greece okay. in there too. It was one of the teams they got to beat, but uh, I don't know. That's uh, as I said when Jokic was here. And now this guy, we're going to have an unlimited supply of these. Every, every, what used to be Yugoslavia, there's six countries there, and they basketball psychos, you know. And, yeah. and well, even and like in bodies are the most unusual. It's like yes. they're Martians. It's yeah. Like, well, yeah, Luca was literally just like drinking a beer in the hallway after, you know, he's yeah. just like wet t-shirt, just <laughs> pounding a beer. Yeah, and as I said, as we've said before, he kind of like, he was the trim in shape Luca last year, right? It was, remember that? That was old. The old boy Luca's never been in such good shape. And then he went home and drank beer all year and put 20 pounds back on. He's better than he ever was. Yeah. He's 25 years old. It's insane. Yeah. yeah. You look at him and you say, what the hell? He's 35, you know? Yeah. The, o- the other thing that I think maybe isn't getting enough because of how just great Luca was, he's just clearly becoming the best player in the NBA. But Kyrie was dismissed for the last two or three years as the, and a lot of it was self-inflicted, Oof, right? Oh, but yeah, God, yes. off the court, just all these wild theories. And he was, he was in the headlines more for his like flat earther stuff and some yeah. of the other stuff than his basketball. But now that it's back to being about basketball for him and he's, he clearly loves being in Dallas. We're yeah. seeing again. Oh that, yeah, that's right. He is mm-hmm. one of the 10 or 12 best players in the world when he's on the court and healthy and, Oh yeah, and he's, uh, you know, and he's, you know, he, he's not. Last year they got him, and then they decided that they wanted to not lose the draft choice. You know, they had a what a top ten, and they didn't want to lose it, so they basically told him, "Yeah, you don't have to play," and they tanked it. And uh, you know, Lou, he's he's well rested, man. He had played a hundred and three games in the three seasons from nineteen to two thousand. 22 because he when he went to brooklyn he never played right he never yeah. played it was brooklyn game. right not brooklyn. a thing who they put together with him irving durant and durant uh, james harden was james there harden. for james harden. part yeah, of it they were all i mean it was just a yeah. complete train wreck and now you look at him down there and uh my guy kunji uh when i was talking to him was was very upset that they had Edwards trying to guard him that first game. He says, because he's unguardable anyway. <laughs> he said, Irving's not guardable anyway, so why do you, you know, he thinks he's one of the greatest guards ever when he plays. Yeah. He, and, I, and I pointed this out before. He played 11 games at Duke. He played the eight preseason the non-conference, and then he played three in the postseason. He played 11 <laughs> games, and he was the first overall pick anyway. Yeah. That's What's crazy. Playing? Yeah, yeah. He, he was uh, he was magnificent when uh, when again in the third quarter when Lucas kind of sat down for a while and he just said, "Okay, I'll go get you some." And uh, but the whole thing, game four, the our our fellas won game four because Luca and Irving didn't make any shots in the fourth quarter. Right? They were but four for nineteen or some damn thing. But when they're normal, I don't know. Sorry. And that's the thing last night is you you could tell they both came out and said, we ain't oh, yeah. going to miss again. In fact, I, I heard a story that there was a guy courtside w- w- with like a um, a handkerchief. And so when Lu- Luca would start to uh, complain, the guy would take it out and start to fake cry. Luca saw it, got ticked off, and at one mm-hmm. point came down the court and said, Who's crying now, MFR? <laughs> I yeah. bet he did. Yeah. I bet he did. Yeah, he seems to observe. I mean, he is he does. The fans all the time, right? He's, uh, I mean, yeah. it's, uh, you know, they're different folks over there. They had the war, you know, they had their own war that they're all, they lived with each other for 
50 years, 60 years in Yugoslavia, and then they decided to have a war, and it was a gruesome war, and now they're, you know, now they're all basketball nuts, and they, uh, you know, the every every country there is, uh, you know, it, it, they're they're basketball crazy, and they're big human beings. They're big guys, you know. Well, and Luca is. I think he started playing professional basketball when he was thirteen 16. or fourteen. Yeah. Well, he he, he went to Real Real Madrid when he was sixteen in the yeah. top European league. He might have played in a like the B European league when he was fourteen. Or I something. think he did. But, yeah. So he's when been, he was you know, sixteen. He was in playing for Real Real Madrid and taking twenty shots a game at sixteen. You know. Yeah. It's amazing. Hey, before we uh, touch on a couple other things here, Pat, you know, the, the Wolves have some more time on their hands. If they're looking to maybe uh, do some sightseeing, what kind of car should the Wolves uh, yes, be looking at? Yes, that's uh, I had a beautiful day driving around in the convertible. And in fact, I was lamenting this. I, I will tell you guys this story, right? I did this on Twitter that when we came back from uh, owning the condo for six years, the only thing I brought back was the butter dish that she'd bought in Naples. We uh, sold the beautiful Toyota Solera used 2006 car that I bought for six grand at Jim Paul's Valley Group of GM dealers with only like 75,000 miles on it. Yeah. Drove that for six years. Then I sold it cheap down there because I didn't want to drive it back. Got rid of everything down there. But yesterday, I'm looking on the counter, and we got a new butter dish. So now we don't even wow. have the last memory of the stay of the <laughs> of the six years. We got it. We got we got rid of the butter dish anyway. Yeah. Jim Paul's Valley Group of GM dealers, great used cars too. Uh, I've, I've gotten. Uh, I haven't gotten them, but I I got that. I got the Toyota Solara convertible, which was terrific, and then I got. Uh, I got friends, relatives who bought three or four used cars there. So it's not just the new cars at Jim Paul and, and Brett Paul's Valley Group of GM dealers in Apple Valley and Hastings. A great supply of uh, used vehicles, too. And, you know, kid graduating from high school here, he needs a car, right? Get him for, to go to college. Doesn't have to be a new one. You can go get him a used one. And they'll uh, make a great deal on, on their used cars, too. Low interest rates, by the way, right now, 0.9%, 1.9%. And on the new ones, a lot of factory rebates now. So uh, yeah. Hastings and Apple Valley, check them out. Jim Paul's Valley Group of GM dealers. Hey, just in our last couple minutes here, let's say let's say Tim Connolly calls you, Patrick Royce, and says, hey, good news. So uh, I opted out, but then I re-signed for a couple million dollars more. I'm still going to be running the Timberwolves, but I've been enjoying your tweets throughout the playoffs. You're a great basketball mind, Patrick. Help me figure out what to do going forward. Should we make a big trade? Should we run it back? Uh, Tim Connolly is asking you to help him. What do you tell him? Uh, okay, I hate to say this. Okay, after this, but I still try to find out what I can get for Cat. I just don't think that you can get yourself in a predicament where you got to be a hundred and nine million dollars, a hundred and fifteen million dollars over the uh, over the you know the, the whatever the second what do we call it the second the uh, uh, the second apron, apron. there yeah the, the there's the salary apron. cap then there's a gap then there's the first apron then there's a gap and then there's the second apron the yeah. other thing at Tim. I think I want my uh, coach to uh, make better use of his bench, too. We, we went through this entire year, and you didn't develop one young player off the bench, right? Did you? Not one no. young player. You know, no. why not? Why not, you know, try to, you know, that Leonard Miller or somebody like that. Give somebody like Josh Minot. Yeah. Uh, give somebody eight, ten minutes a game. And uh, I, 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 I want to. Are any are they, any of these guys any good? It looks like there's always a reason they got all. They like Minot, and then Jalen Clark's the interesting one because yeah, he's Mellon, the he's Mellon. he was the defensive, defensive player of the year. Yeah, yeah defender. And he was hurt all year. They had an excuse mm -hmm. on him, but I just think that here, here's a, I was kind of in on the idea of trading Cat more than 
watching Nas last night, I'm thinking, he really a starter? <laughs> you know, because he'd have to be a starter for you. But I guess I'd take that chance. But here's the other thing I'd do. I'd say, I'd, I'd bring in Nas and say, Nas, you got to get rid of that ponytail. You're running back down the court and you're fixing your ponytail too much. I, mean, I, I don't mind any kind of hairdo that doesn't bother you. But when a guy's running down, fixing his ponytail, when the other team's coming down to score points, that bothers me. But anyway, I mean. What sure. Nas needs are goggles. Nobody gets poked in the eye more than yeah. Nas. It's he the does seem to get thing. poked in the eye a lot. Go yeah. Kurt Rambis, man. Just go like full like <laughs> goggle glass. I don't care what it is. Is he, those 30, eyes. is he a 34 minute a day night starter? Do we know? Yeah, that? we don't we don't know, right? We've seen we've yeah. seen him for, for chunks when he plays that minutes. We've seen some grit, but it you're you're definitely he's not the big body defender that Cat no. has been. You can't just put him on Jokic and I mean Carl Anthony Towns playing defense on Jokic was one of the big reasons why they won that series against Denver. Yes, and I am yeah, not yeah, I am not did. the biggest cat defender as you guys all know, but No, uh, if 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 the owners want to pay the tariff, then I keep, you know, then I I keep cat cuz uh you know, he drive you crazy once in a while, but God almighty, they won 56 games, you know. This is they were the when the year started they were the 16th pick to win the NBA in the NBA title, and they were 66 to one, and they were like ninth, eighth or ninth rated team in the West, and they go out and win 56 games. So, I guess you run them back, but you also work harder on your bench. There's about, you know, I, I just think that, I don't know. You got to. I, I was. They should have played more players this year. I I, I felt like uh, just. Should have, you know, give some of these guys eight, ten minutes once in a while. But uh, yeah, I you don't might lose. You might lose a few more games while you. But you maybe you've built that luxury now. Where okay, you know that you're a fifty yes. plus win team. Yes. Maybe you drop to the four seed because you played Josh Minot as an experiment a few times. But yeah, got, you, you got to do it. I got to tell you the other thing that drives me a little crazy is that this is a young team just trying to get started. You got Rudy. You got cats been in the league for nine years. You got Michael Connolly. You got the oldest. You got Nas has been around for what? Five? Five, yeah. five now? I mean, you got in age, uh, Edwards is only 22 and McDaniels is only 23. But Kyle, Kyle Anderson's played in like yeah. 70 playoff games or something. Yeah. Like, I mean, they're experienced. Anthony, Ant's got four years and McDaniels got five. It's not like a. It's not this. Oh, you know, the, you got to experience it to do well. Well, they they did well. They won two rounds and they beat Denver. And it's one of the. It it's too bad that they didn't go out last night losing by four, right? Yeah, you know, it's too bad they go out in an embarrassing defeat mm-hmm. because it kind of uh, gives you a bad feeling about the whole thing, but the. That second series should never be forgotten because it was the damnedest thing I've ever watched in my life. That seven-game <laughs> series with Denver was just uh, That's crazy. I, I don't know what I tell him, but uh, if I, I I really feel they'd have a hard time making a good deal for Cat, but if he can, you know, I don't know. Any of these guys, any of these personalities, are either Cat or Ant going to want out of here? No, no, I think well, Cat last night made his plea. I, I don't even like he was kind of asked about the future and, and he made a plea as if he senses he might be on the trade block. He said, I hope I get to come back and stick around. I love this city. Anthony Edwards does not feel like a championship city hopping player right now. No, I think no, he doesn't. He just, I mean, maybe that changes in five years, but I think he takes pride in I want to make it happen here. I want to put my stamp on the NBA not in a Lakers uniform, but doing it for a franchise like this. Not not yet, but... We'll Here's see. my observation, big picture observation, being in bad seats upstairs and climbing up there. We are going to have to get an arena. <laughs> I oh, yeah. hate to say it. I hate to say it, but uh, this is... 
this is not a this is not a well done arena. No matter who owns it, whether it's Glenn Taylor or the other two guys, you're gonna have to start making arrangements to get an arena. So, you know, and maybe I think the thing it would be if you could build it where it is, because downtown Minneapolis would be in bad, bad shape. I mean, we had the tragedy yesterday. It wasn't downtown. It was 22nd Blaisdell. But, uh, you know, it would be bad, bad shape without it. But you could, you could play in St. Paul for a couple of years, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and rebuild it. So, but we... I think we're gonna have to gonna have to kick around the idea how how's it gonna be financed because you're gonna you're gonna maybe get five hundred million out of the owners but you're still gonna you're gonna have to come up with another five six hundred million of public money yep. so well Pat we uh, the Vikings train doesn't stop even when the Timberwolves are uh, are peaking like this so we got to run and do a, a live Purple Daily feedback Friday here but uh, what, we'll, what do we got going on out there is this the official mini camp or is this next well, week OTAs okay. mandatory mini camp next week we'll see, see out, out there, there. Bring Tuesday back, Wednesday bring back Bud Grant who was dragged against his protest into having a two day mini camp after about eight years after everybody else had one, you know, <laughs> the off season workouts were, you know, do would just show up boys, uh, you know, for opening day. Of, so it's a, it's a little change, but yeah, now we can, uh, uh, one more thing though, a uh, nice win for the twinks yesterday. You got to say that. Nice I, comeback. De- yeah. Declan was there and, uh, yeah, they uh, they got some hits and nice, nice comeback against a good Kansas city team. I like that team. Mm-hmm. Amen. Everybody yep. on my Bobby Witt bandwagon now? Everybody yep. agree? Everyone's there. The Everyone's there. Okay. Yep. All right. All right, See Pat. You. We'll talk Bye. to you next week. There he is. Yep. Roycey Unchained presented by Josh Arnold.